To begin with, I would like to invite Mr. Wei Xiong Chen, who is the Deputy Executive Director of the United Nations Counterterrorism Directorate to deliver his remarks. Mr. Chen, please. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to express my sincere thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this conference and for their warm hospitality given to me and my dedication. I wish to begin by reiterating some key elements of the United Nations Security Council in countering terrorism and violent extremism conducive to terrorism. First, the United Nations condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, regardless of its motivation, whenever and by whomsoever committed. Second, it also condemns all terrorist acts including those on the basis of xenophobia, racism, and other forms of intolerance, or in the name of religion or belief. Third, terrorism cannot and should not be associated with any religion, nationality, civilization, or group. Fourth, Member States of the United Nations must ensure that any measures taken to combat terrorism comply, comply with all the obligations under international law, in particular international human rights, refugee, and humanitarian law. Next, I wish to touch upon the current terrorism landscape which remains complex, fluid, and volatile, in particular in conflict areas. Daesh continue to carry out insurgent activities and mounting attacks. The Sahel and Sub-Saharan regions in Africa have become key theaters of terrorist activity. The impact of terrorism is compounded by environmental crisis, poverty, weak governance, and human rights abuses, allowing terrorists and violent extremist groups to exploit those local grievances. Another concern is the growing number of known actors, including self-radicalized individuals the use of unmanned aircraft systems for terrorist purposes or for terrorist organizations advance capabilities to plan and carry out attacks. New information and communication technology, ICT, and related online spaces, including artificial intelligence applications, as mentioned by the Honorable Minister and also the, uh, the, the opener uh, of the, this event, will enhance terrorist and violent extremist capabilities to generate and disseminate propaganda, radicalize and recruit new members, and conduct virtual training. Daesh-affiliated groups have been reported to raise funds through extortion, looting, Donations, kidnapping for ransom, narcotics and human trafficking, and benefiting from smuggling or exploiting various types of natural resources. The challenge of returning and relocating foreign terrorist fighters and their families remains despite repatriation uh, efforts and some progress 
by member states as countries of origin, transit, or nationality. To address the issue of counterterrorism and countering violent extremism conducive to terrorism, there are several major areas of attention. And I call them the five C's in English. First, the commitment. The commitment by member states for action. The United Nations Security Council resolutions and 19 international legal instruments have laid down the obligations and guidance for member states to take effective measures, either legislative, institutional, or operational for full implementation. Second, the capacity. The capacity for member states to respond. We have a saying, when there is the will, there should be the way. But from our analysis in the United Nations, there are more than half of the total membership of the United Nations falling under the category of low capacity states. Those member states, they need technical assistance and material support in capacity building. The underlying issue would be to enhance their capability and resilience. One example that this conference is to address is countering violent extremism through effective rehabilitation and reintegration program, which we know would be cost intensive and would only be sustained under its life cycle with sufficient resources and support. Another example is on developing and, adopt and adopting effective messaging and counter narratives in the media and on the internet to strengthen our counterterrorism responses. This is not, this not only requires the participation at the societal and community levels, but also requires a highly sophisticated IT team. Third, cooperation. The cooperation of member states, among member states to tackle their common terrorist challenges and emerging threats. Interstate cooperation in all domains and at various levels and sharing good practices would help achieve result and success for all. Fourth, collaboration. The collaboration of all other interlocutors and players. Our efforts could only be holistic and comprehensive, human rights compliant and gender sensitive, and based on the whole of government and whole of society approach, engaging a wide range of stakeholders, including academia, as we see today here with us, and research partners on the other side of the table, and community and religious leaders, civil society organizations, women and youth groups, and the private sector. Fifth, coherence the coherence of one UN approach in these support activities. There are currently 46 entities and organizations within the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Coordination Compact, under which my office, CTED, is one of the key participants and contributors. CTED is now undertaking one important task to support the Security Council Counterterrorism Committee in preparing a set of non-guiding principles to assist member states in preventing, detecting, and disrupting the use of emerging financial technologies, information and communication technologies, and unmanned aircraft systems for terrorist purposes. Excellence, Madame and Monsieur les Delegates, 
Mesdames et Messieurs, nous en venons maintenant au Maroc. Le Maroc est un partenaire solide et proche dans la direction exécutive contre le terrorisme, dans la lutte contre le terrorisme et l'extrémisme violent pouvant conduire au terrorisme. Des programmes significatifs ont été accomplis et reconduits par le comité contre le terrorisme qui a effectué deux visites d'évaluation en place. La dernière en date remonte à 2019. Un certain nombre de pratiques ont été reconnues par le comité comme étant de bonnes pratiques. L'autre droit de Morgan sur l'extrémisme et la violence et le Policy Center for the New South sont deux membres actifs de notre région mondiale de recherche, qui comprend plus de 100 autres institutions mondiales et régionales. J'ai également pris note de la création récente du Centre national pour la déradicalisation, le désengagement et la réhabilitation. Il s'agit, il s'agit d'une étape importante qui démontre l'engagement fort en faveur de la déradicalisation et la solution holistique en matière de prévention, de ré réhabilitation et de réintégration. Je tiens également à souligner les efforts et la contribution d'autres acteurs importants, tels que le Cisco, Al Habitda et la DGABR, dans la lutte contre l'extrémisme violent et la promotion de la tolérance, ainsi que le soutien à l'organisation de cette conférence. L'ordre du jour et l'orientation de cette conférence sont très pertinents et importants pour les questions qui nous intéressent et nous préoccupent actuellement. Nous comptons, nous comptons sur vos efforts, efforts pertinents et votre volonté de réfléchir aux questions cruciales dans le contexte de la lutte contre le terrorisme et l'extrémisme violent en vue de trouver une meilleure solution. À cet égard, et au nom de la direction exécutive contre le terrorisme, je vous souhaite tous les succès possibles dans votre opération au cours de deux prochains jours. Merci beaucoup.